Intel, which has been a regular topic uh, for us over the last several weeks, because it's just had a ton of big breaking stories. Uh, a few weeks ago, it was their big IBM two day uh, launched by Pat Gelsinger. And this time, Naveen Chinoy and Lisa Spellman came back to announce a much awaited Ice Lake, uh, which is their third generation Xeon scalable solution for the data center and beyond the edge and the cloud. <laughs> I just want to point that out. But uh, uh, Pat, we talked a lot about it. I do want to give you some kudos. I wrote a, a quick piece about it that's in the show notes, but you wrote one of, actually one of my favorite pieces I've had you write because this is a very nuanced topic, potentially as nuanced as the Amazon topic in its own way, because you really are talking about companies that made major investments. This is a breakthrough moment. There's a lot of positivity, but at the same time, there's still some tech leadership issues that it hasn't necessarily uh, caught up to some that have, have, have leapfrogged in certain areas. And you did a really good job of breaking that down. Uh, I appreciate that, Daniel. And I can't tell you how meaningful is it uh, to me uh, for, for kudos on, uh, on the article. I don't always get it right, but sometimes I, sometimes I do. So uh, let's talk about Ice Lake here. So uh, just a little bit of a background. Uh, Intel, um, while it, it has around a 35% data center, which is you know server storage, networking, and security, it has a 90% server uh, market share out there. And uh, the, the announcement on their latest gen uh, Xeon scalable processor, uh, plus some some new um, memory options for Optane, uh, combined with uh, things like uh, uh, Agile X, uh, FPGAs, and, and, and networking, uh, Intel really leaned into their strengths. And I think what I'm going to do, uh, uh, like I did in our our longer podcast, just just talk about what wasn't in the releases, and I think explain some of the, the unwritten uh, elements of, of why Intel still does so well, even though it's not winning all of the native uh, benchmarks out there, uh, as quite frankly, we saw the day of uh, a launch on a non-tech and, and serve the home. But uh, I spent over 10 years competing with Intel. I spent 10 years at systems companies working with Intel. I think I know Intel pretty well. And uh, one of the thing, one of the reasons that 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 Intel, I think, is going to continue to do well, even though it's not going to win on the non-native benchmarks, is is first off, they are bringing a lot of accelerators to the table. Inside of third gen are crypto accelerators and um, uh, machine learning uh, accelerators, and uh, for. The com competitors, they essentially need to have an external accelerator uh, to do that that is, 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 is more cost. But a very quick jump off of that, um, you have to understand, Intel, let's look at salespeople. Intel has hundreds, if not thousands of salespeople calling on uh, end users in the data center, enterprise data center, and uh, CSPs, comms SPs, uh, et cetera. Uh, AMD doesn't make this investment. Uh, Intel also pays, I would say, for most of the design funding that's out there in the OEM and a little bit of ODM. Uh, that's a lot of money. So that reduces R&D costs for people. Uh, marketing. Intel spends over a billion dollars a year uh, in marketing. <clears throat> AMD does not. And when you get into um, OEMs who aren't picking sides here, that that means that Intel and AMD have to carry the water for things like uh, promotion. And I just said, Intel spends a billion dollars a year in marketing and AMD doesn't. Uh, who do you think uh, wins this uh, round? The other thing is enterprise conservatism. Um, a, um, by the way, at this time during Opteron, AMD had 26% market share. It has 10% right now. So there's something there's something going on here. And a lot of this, I think, is enterprise conservatism, which is if it's not broken, uh, why fix it? AMD might win, win the, the uh, native benchmarks, uh, but quite frankly, nobody got shot uh, in IT for being the hero. Uh, but as I said in my article, they do get shot for being a zero, uh, for making life difficult, maybe, uh, uh, you know, or, or something more complex with live migrations. And I think that's a, a, a real uh, issue out of there. Again, no disrespect to AMD. I mean, they went from zero, zero percent market share to 10 percent. There's a lot of kudos out there. But at the same time, 
in, mo in a lot of benchmarks, they're running up the score on Intel and they're at 10%. So there's other value that's there that Intel brings to the table that I tried to uncover in my uh, analysis, Daniel. And I think you hit on most of those issues as well. Yeah, you, you did a really good job. And, and like I said, I, I recommend everyone that's uh, listening in, pick, you know, just hit the article because like I said, it, it goes in depth um, at a level that you sort of had these, this just dichotomy of, of, of people analyzing the day. It was either kind of like, yay, woohoo, Intel, great job. Um, or, and in more cases, it was people who are kind of what I'd say your benchmark geeks kind of hammering Intel a little bit saying, you know, new stuff, but AMD's faster, AMD's faster. And, 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 and all joking about that aside, the way I kind of see it is, look, Intel gets ecosystem, Intel gets marketing, Intel gets uh, provenance in a way that, hey, these companies have worked with Intel forever. They're going to stick with Intel. They got the wins. They brought the same customers, came back. So you got your Oracles there and your Microsofts there. And they're all going to continue working with, with Intel. And so, you know, while Intel was at its very weakest over these past couple of years, AMD grabbed market share. But you could argue that they the, the biggest opportunity that maybe would ever have existed for AMD to grab market share probably passed at the point in which this Ice Lake launch took place. Because um, not only is Ice Lake now in market, but you do have Pat involved. You've got new... Uh, fabs being built, you've got more scale, uh, more manufacturing capacity being developed. You've got a company that's seemingly finding its groove again. So there may not have been a better moment to grab market share. And, and you also have ARM entering the picture, and that's going to change the landscape for sure as these ASICs uh, for the data center continue to be built with special purpose. Um, we're seeing it from AWS and Alibaba. Microsoft is following track, and you can be sure others We'll be following track as, as ARM continues to develop more and more capable IP. Uh, but Pat, great article. Like I said, hit it, read it, go into the show notes. Uh, if you're listening to this in the car, pull over, um, go into the show notes, click the link, bookmark it, go home, read it. Because like I said, I don't even think we could do it justice because like I said, you did a really good job of, of crossing. And, and by the way, very balanced. There was some very pro Intel in there, but there was also some very not pro. And so what it, and, and, and that's kind of what I love when I see analysis is it's never one thing. 